Hello, it's Gizmo. <laughs> Hi, Gizmo. <laughs> what an adorable dog. We'll show you Astro in a minute. He just left to go sleep. But um, Astro, come here, Astro. Come here, Astro. Come to daddy. Come come to, here. Come Astro's to the, a rescue to, also. Come to the one you love. This, here, hold my mic. Okay, hold on. <laughs> we have Gizmo. Gizmo, meet Astro. There you go, Astro. Say hi to Gizmo. He's like, what are hi, you doing? <laughs> He's he, wants to make, he wants to make out. Oh, I make out with my, oh, I tongue kiss my dog. I make out with him. I, I'm not into bestiality. Oh, I'm cool. just into, I love, I love my dog. So oh, look, much. see, he's kissing his too. So, Dan, I have a question. How do we pronounce your last name? Babic? Um, Babic, yeah, it's Croatian. So I think it's technically got an accent on the end. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's Babic. But uh, if you were in Croatia, you would pronounce it Babic. Oh, okay. So we'll go with Babic then. Just if because I was got in it. Co Croatia, I would be happy. <laughs> I know. I wish I was in Croatia too. Well, actually, um, a lot of uh, you know wealthy Americans were there at the start of the pandemic because that was one of the only places that you could go that you know in Europe that was still open. So uh, you know, everyone everyone was there about a year ago when we first closed down because that was the only country that people were allowed to get into. So, no, Croatia has a wonderful ancient Roman history. And that's what I'm interested in seeing. I read something or saw something on TV about this uh, Roman something they dug up, and it's fascinating. It is. It is. It was um, It was almost like the south of France before the south of France, and that's why they were in so many different wars for so many years because people wanted that, you know, Adriatic coastline, so so many countries tried to take it over. But uh, it's a beautiful country, and, uh, yeah, I uh, hopefully I'll finally be able to get there this year because I – had lots of travel plans last year, but they were cancelled. But one positive thing out of COVID was this little buddy over here because I've been with him now for five months and uh, finally... Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to talk about that in just well, a wait second. Wait a minute. You know what? I have an idea. If you want to get to Croatia, you got to save some money, right? Go around to all the factories you can go to and pick up the bottles and then bring them in and deposit them. Yeah, and get that right. deposit. <laughs> Get that deposit, you know, they give you 50 cents a bottle. <laughs> Put that in a bank book, and then you get a ticket to Croatia. Yeah. Really? It, it, like one plus one plus one plus one. If you collect a thousand bottles, there we go. There's your ticket to Croatia. Absolutely. Yeah, you just got to go looking for them. Well, you go to fact. I Listen, I did that when I was a kid. I mean, I used to get two cents for one bottle and five cents for the great big bottles. And I would get a quarter. And for a quarter, I got a salami sandwich, a devil dog, and a grape soda on 25 cents. That's how old I am. Ooh. Can you imagine? 25 Hang cents. Hang on, wait. We, I want to do an intro for him. Okay. All right. Hold on, Dan. All right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, world-renowned fashion TV host style expert, Dan Babick and Gizmo. Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you. We're so excited to be here. I think Gizmo's uh, most excited because uh, it's all got into his head a little bit. He loves being a famous doggy. So uh, <laughs> he's been very excited to meet you both. And, and, and be He's adorable. He's now, adorable. Now, to clear it up, you rescued him. I did rescue him. So um, Good for you. You got a good... God damn my voice today. I should shut up. You... Um... You got wait, wait, you're wrecking it because you don't know who he is. No, I do all the research. He good, doesn't know anything, so I have to bring it up. Look how beautiful that oh, he's dog is. a beautiful is. dog. So he's hang a, on. He's a good one. You got a good one. Some of them are ratty looking. Hold on, hold on. a beautiful one. He's gorgeous, and here's what so we're going to do. I'm going to do the take, intro I would have it. taken him if I saw him. I'm going into – to because he doesn't know who you – he doesn't know the show that you got the dog on, so I want to explain no, it a no little, idea. and then we'll, like, talk I, about I, it. I don't know. So first of all, everybody in the chat room loves your jacket. They think you look great. Let's see what else are they saying. Uh, I'll, I'll actually. Uh, uh, B. Claudia says she got a dog from Croatia too, and uh, everybody loves your hair and your jacket. So you're getting all kinds of compliments. We have a chat room. There's so how about say hi to everybody in the chat room. We have like ten countries represented right now. Ooh, he got well, hello everyone. Well, thank you so much. I mean, like, well, that's what I do for work. You know, I, I work in the fashion industry, so you know, I would want to hope that my outfit today, you know, is worthy. Uh, <laughs> of, you know. Of this interview, so uh, I'm obviously doing well. So the chat room fashion police, you know, give me the approval. So that makes me feel very good. And then we got to introduce you. So this is my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, who's also my husband, Ron Russell. Isn't Jimmy lucky? 
know. I, I thought right. you were Brad Pitt. I got confused. I didn't know that Brad Pitt was joining us, but it's, it's obviously you. So I got so confused. Sorry. That was quick. So you guys, I let love me, you. You're funny. Let me do Thank a- God we got somebody on that can hold a show for me because I'm falling apart. <laughs> you know, we had a wretched weekend of party, party, drinking, party, party, fun, fun, fun. So you guys, and, and it can wreck a girl's complexion. So you guys, I'm going to like do a little explanation about Gizmo and Dan. I mean, he's he's on TV all the time, but he's also on Vanderpump Dogs, which is uh, the television show launched by Lisa Vanderpump, who everybody all reality. You know, Ron and I don't really watch a lot of reality shows, but I, everybody knows who she is. And and that's actually where you got Gizmo, right? Because Vanderpump Dogs is uh, is like a rescue to help rescue dogs, help them find homes and also to help um, stop the barbaric torture and practices in China where they like eat dogs and stuff. It's just I know. I, it's, it's interesting because a lot of everyone knows her from, you know, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. That's how she kind of was introduced to the world. But, uh, you know, her passion really is, you know, saving animals. So, um, you know, she opened this rescue center about five years ago and, you know, they save all the animals from all the kill shelters, you know, around America. And, and also in China, they have they literally ship over animals. And and uh, yeah, they have, a, you know, they have a policy that if they go to a kill shelter, they will save every single dog on death row. So um, she uh, knew that I was looking for a dog because I'd worked with her in the past. And... and uh, yeah, well, we, of her team reached we, out to me because they thought, well, you know, they know I was looking it'd be fun for the TV show. So that's how Gizmo came into my life. I like love well, it. We have three rescues, uh, and our eldest rescue, you know, he's ready for the bridge uh, soon because he's really old. And as soon as he goes, then we're going to get another one like Astro, another little one. But I don't know that Astro is going to be happy about that because he's a snob and he's the love boy. How do you think it would be if, like, you had another one like this little one? Do you think they'd get along? Well, do you know what? Well, without being, you know, um, too negative or, you know, or giving anything that's too upsetting, he actually had a twin brother that didn't make it, that, you know, Vanderpump Dogs didn't get there in time. So I I wish I would have That is a sin. That's a fucking sin. I I know, like, how... It doesn't make any sense. Uh, I will never... They killed killed, killed a dog like that. They should drop dead, whoever did that. I know, I know. But uh, thank God in California now, um, all kill shelters have been outlawed. I think, you know, only a few months ago. But, you know, in many other states, this is still being done every day. So... um, how, how how much does Gizmo weigh? He weighs five pounds. Oh my God, that's so little. So cute. So we were because well, uh, Astro weighs seven pounds. But wait a second, I have to interrupt this because I'm now really pissed off over what I heard. It's the people that get these little puppies and think they're so adorable, and then when they pee on the floor, they throw them out or they put them in uh, shelters to get killed. It's the people's fault. Not the government, not the kill shelters, because they don't know what to do with these dogs. If we let every dog in the world live, we're going to be overrun with dogs. But the trick is, uh, puppy mills, stop it. And everybody out there, stop it. We have Canadians that come to Palm Springs, and they adopt a dog for the season. They buy it. And then they let it loose in the street when they go back to Canada, because they can't bring it in the country. So we have all these beautiful dogs roaming around Palm Springs and they go into the shelter. But thank God our shelter is not a kill. Well, he just said there's none in California are kill shelters. Right. But our shelter is not a kill. All three of our dogs are rescues. So we have a a Shazam. He's a Brazilian Fila Mastiff. He's like 135 pounds. And we got him from the big dog rescue ranch. He's the one that's old that's ready for the bridge. And then we got another dog, Brandy, and she's an English sheepdog terrier mix. And she's like 35 pounds. And then Astro, we got like two years ago, and he's seven pounds. Seven pounds. And, and we were just at um, Ron Moss and Devin DeVasquez. You might actually know them. Uh, Ron Moss is from like The Bold and the Beautiful, and she's like a Playboy model and stuff. Uh, they're, uh, they have a three pound rescue they call Mr. Prince. Um, and it's a, well, what is that called? Uh, Pomeranian, I think. Pomeranian, uh, like Chihuahua, Chihuahua mix. mix. And it's only three pounds, cute full grown. Well. It's so cute. cute, and it's got his own YouTube page, like like Gizmo has a, I mean, an Instagram page, like Gizmo has an Instagram page, and it has fifty thousand followers on it. I want to get an Instagram oh, page. Wow. For Astro. Well, Gizmo's jealous because he used to be three pounds when I adopted him, and uh, he used to have a policy that uh, you know he has to be the smallest dog in the room, um, or else. <laughs> he is. So uh, you know they can't be friends because. Gizmo has to be the smallest, uh, otherwise it's it's a no go. 
he is so adorable and you are so cute you have but such a nice my smile. question i think was almost would you get another one as a companion or do you believe in a one dog family do you know what well my boyfriend has two dogs um that are you know about 10 pounds and 12 pounds so you know they've become you know oh, so you've, you've, got, you've got other dogs i do so um you know and you know my boy i you know i'm there four nights a week you know i'm about to move in soon so you know he's already got a little family so, that is um, so, so wait cute. a minute wait a minute you're only there four nights a week you're not going to get married <laughs> you want to no, like be a tramp forever you always want to be a trampy person <laughs> Jimmy and, I, Jimmy and I got married. We're married almost 10 years now. Congratulations. Well, do you know what? It's, I've actually heard, well, you know, you might be able to attest to this or you might not be able to, that after 10 years, uh, you know, gay couples or, you know, uh, you know, who are married, 90% of them open up the relationship. Not here. Not here, baby. <laughs> I'm one wild guinea, Italian, jealous. Well, no way. First of all, our 10 years isn't until October. It'll be October right. 15th. It'll be our right, 10 right, years. Right. And... and so you're going to continue to be a used man? I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to continue to be a used man. Absolutely. Se sexually used and then tossed aside. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the way we like it. That's the way we like it. <laughs> so I want to go back a little bit. First of all, because uh, I, th I don't think actually people in America know this, and we're going to talk about the other things you do also, but Vanderpump Dogs is a very cool thing. And I Googled you online and they I told, love this already. And they told me that that you're kind of known as the gay Lisa Vanderpump um already. <laughs> like you're kind of oh, like gay. the gay I version know, of I her. I didn't know he was gay. And and you adopted Gizmo <laughs> and already you're taking him to Fashion Week and red carpets and from what I uh, also read, like you, you get to do hosting and stuff. You've done hosting for the Academy Awards and the Golden Globes and all kinds of stuff. So you're like a big shit, um, uh, which is fun. We we like that. We like big shit. Uh, <laughs> actually, you know, big, big, big deal is nice. <laughs> It was nice. Ron, do you know who you remind me of? Um, I might be gay Lisa Vanderpump, but you're gay Joan Rivers. <laughs> who? He says you're like the gay Joan Rivers. He actually knew her. He worked with her. I knew jo Joan. Uh, Joan Rivers uh, off camera was as quiet and as withdrawn as could be. She didn't have a sense of humor at all. And I told her that in the green room one day. I said, how come you're not cracking a joke? She said, because you're not paying to see me. <laughs> <laughs> so I got that was OK. But she was a very quiet, uh, self-contained woman. But on stage, she was brilliant. Funny as hell. Yeah. I love Joan. What about what about you, Ron? When the cameras come off, are you quiet? Do you, what about Jimmy? What, uh, what's you, oh, no, no, no. He's what, never quiet. What you see on screen is He's, what you we, got. We're exactly no. the same on screen as we are in real life. We yeah, don't change no, no. at all. I am very friendly. I am liked by many people. I'm disliked by many people. But I, I have a majority more of people that like me because I'm open. I'm honest. I don't blow smoke up anybody's ass. I don't lie. I don't gossip and say terrible things about people those are all the, the i stay away from people that do that i'm not interested in in uh, knowing somebody's hardship or i'm mean, like you that you're just a, a backstreet girl <laughs> a, used, a, a used person a sexual object absolutely that's me that's me i would cool. never go i would never gossip about that and tell five and a half million people that are watching now that, <laughs> that, 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 that you are you you need to get to the lord because you're a sinning bitch yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, Actually, and watch out you don't i want to tell you dan watch out, you don't get pregnant the, 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 chat, the chat room loves you they're like writing things. i love i've him. never ever had it. Nobody's, i love no and we've had you know we get some really great high profile guests and i don't know we just broke a billion streams on uh yeah. on our show Imagine um so we just broke streams. a billion streams and and uh, and in the chat room, they're saying that you're exquisite. I mean, they're using like terms that they don't ever use for like any of our guests. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Well, I'm I'm flattered, they're, and especially that's amazing. Like a billion downloads or views, like that's incredible. You guys are a big deal. Well, yeah, we are. But you're a kept boy. I I'm am. Sure. And, and wait, let's talk about your boyfriend. He's got money or not? Do you know what's so funny? I call him a splendor daddy. Uh, not a sugar daddy. And, oh, he's, uh, wait, he's old? A splendid daddy. A splen <laughs> I know, because it's healthier. He's older than you? He is 29 years older oh, girl. than me. Oh, that's oh, a... We're, we're, we're the we? same. It, except Jimmy's not rich, and I don't get anything out of him. 
But so now I'm, you're, 50, you're, you're, I'm 56 and he's 81. Meanwhile, married this one. So we're 26. No, married years. this one because he may not have long to go. Oh, you is he on your Insta- is he on your Instagram? I want to see what he looks like. Did you Dude, ever he's on with Gizmo's him? Instagram. I think he made an appearance on Gizmo's. Instagram. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go tell everybody what's Gizmo's Instagram and what's your Instagram. Well, Gizmo's is Gizmo Vanderpump, and then mine is <laughs> my name, Dan Babic. So Gizmo Vanderpump. And Dan Babix, very you guys simple. Follow them, follow them, you guys. Uh, everybody loves that splendid daddy thing. So I'm going to go on Gizmos and look when we have a no, chance. No, but so you you like old bags too, Jimmy? You like old yes. I'm I, 81. I'm 81 years old, and Jimmy is 50. What seven, eight, 56? I'll be 57 56, this year. Yeah. So look at that age difference. He's so much older looking than I. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because both of you, and it might sound bad, but both of you are attractive men. So when you Thank are you. attractive, it's like it's not a big of a deal. But uh, you know, if uh, you know if the young one's attractive and then the old one is, you know, hideous, that's what people <laughs> make a big deal. Of. Because you're hot, it's like cool. It's like it's not a thing at all. It's like you oh, know, you got you hot. So who cares I, that you're older? I know what you mean. You know, <clears throat> we have. Now that we're eating in the gutters of Palm Springs, because you couldn't eat indoors, a Rolls Royce <laughs> stopped in front of one of our tables, which they were almost in our table. And it was this hideous, ugly, wrinkled, old, skeleton, disgusting man. He must have been 150. Next to him, a 21-year-old, beautiful, gorgeous, blonde, blue-eyed stud and... I'm sure if I went over and asked the stud, do you love him? He would say, oh, yes, I adore every bit of him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to go to bed with him. Yeah. <laughs> so you think those queens are out for bucks, right? I do. I do. So are you a gold digger? Were you looking for gold with this number? He doesn't need to. No. Well, like, so like, made. Yeah. Well, do you know what? I actually, I joked because I think he was worried about that at the start. Um, and, you know, and he does well, but not that well. And, uh, you know, he has, a, you know, a gorgeous two-bedroom condo. Um, but I said to him, I said, David, I said, if I was after money, do you think I'd be hanging out with you in your two-bedroom condo? <laughs> no, ex- exactly. On the other side of the hill in a big mansion in Bel Air. This is LA. <laughs> Absolutely. dollars condo. Woo! That's what Abs- I was really after. Absolutely. I love you. I love, uh, I, I love him already. He's my new best friend. You are my new best friend. Do you live, in, L- do you live in L.A.? Do you live in L.A.? Oh, wait, he froze. He froze. Oh, no, what happened? Oh, shit. I do. Oh, there he goes. He I did. Do. Okay. Um, you got to come to our next function. Uh, what are you doing? On, are you are you available next Wednesday night? Great movie to see. Yes, I am. I'm always yes. available. I will send red you an invite. I have one. I I have one red carpet invite left for a horror movie. It's going to be a really good one. We've got a lot really of great good. famous people coming to it, and and I'll send you an email. And have you? You have to have been tested though. You have to have a fucking COVID thing. Did you get tested for COVID? I do. I've got the, I've got my like vaccine card. Okay. Already. Yeah, you, to, good, you good. have to have. You have this, to have the this, vaccine. This way, you and I can dish. Yeah, because we would love. It. I'd love to invite you. I only have one invite left, and so uh, I will. Yeah. I will send it to you later today. You know, you're and, cool, uh, and gay, you can come gay, with us. You'll love it. Gay people either come in nice or they come in nasty. You know, they come in two forms, and you come in nice. I don't like I, nasty I, fags. I, nasty fags, I want to smack around. I don't like those bitchy queens that always that are negative and they say nasty, rotten things. I like to kick them in their faces. But I think that we would have a blast with you. We can put you on our little list. You know, I'm um I'm also uh you, I love your publicist. She's fabulous. Hi, Kira. Um, but uh, I'm also a publicist, and so like I I get invited to because we have this show. We get invited to all the red carpet stuff, and and usually. Because they know I have a lot of famous friends, they always ask me to invite people. So I get like and we you're did. Famous. We did one this weekend, and I had thirty passes, so I invited thirty people. This one I don't have as many; I only have a few, but uh, but I have one left, and so I'll, I would love for you to come with us. And we dress outrageous, so you can oh, dial up. Oh, you can do your number. Honey. He looks great. I looked at all his you, Instagram you can, pictures. You can mop. Just do, I'm do your number. Gizmo, you'll have to stay home. You're not invited. Only yeah, one he's of not invited. Mom, so uh, it, it's going to be me. It'll be fun. So let's go back and let's do some promotional things for you real quick. So first of all, you guys, you want to watch Vanderpump Dogs. It's on uh, Peacock, right? Correct. That's NBC's new streaming service. It's on It's it's on Peacock. It's Lisa Vanderpump's Vanderpump Dogs. Um, uh, on, episode, you, on episode two, that's where you adopt Gizmo, right? Episode Correct. two, he adopts Gizmo. Um, 
And then for anybody who doesn't know anything, because I didn't know about this really, but that Lisa Vanderpump really did. She launched a campaign to stop you. It's called Stop You in Forever. And it's um, to, to basically stop the meat trade in Asia. And there's an actual thing called the Yulin Dog Meat Festival in China where they, like, kill dogs and eat them, which I think is the most disgraceful thing I've ever even heard heard of. Well, you know, parts of China are very disgraceful for a lot of yeah, reasons. It's just freaking terrible. And so I think that it's terrible. <laughs> and I think what she's doing with uh, – I mean, she's turned it into a TV show, you guys, but really it was already existing ahead of time. It's not just for TV. Um She's rescuing dogs. She's giving dogs a loving forever home. Um, I think it's super great because I think everybody should rescue a dog. Rescue dogs, you know, need love too. And the Chinese really uh, eat weird stuff because we have a very dear friend, Su Wang, the famous designer. And she told stories about when she was a little girl, they were so poor in China that her grandmother would kill rats and cook them and Su ate them. So they ate rats in China. You know, the communists took over and destroyed the country. That's what. That's why they allow them to kill dogs because the commies run the country. Yeah, it's freaking terrible. So Sue Wong, actually, as being a fashion person, even though she's retired now, but she's like a really world famous like uh, gown designer. She um, is. She's pretty major. I've uh, I've never actually met her. I've we've been in the same room probably about a hundred times, but uh, we've never actually formally met. So uh, I think we've got a lot of mutual friends. So I uh, I look forward to meeting her. Hopefully, oh, we can meet her. She's one of my clients, we'll, and she's we'll, one of our best friends. So we can work that she's, out. She's doing a big party when she gets back. I'll see if she has how many guests, and then I'll let you know. And we'll you see can if come. we can get you invited. We'll, we'll invite you in if she's not getting too because she's in um, Bangkok. No, where is she's she? in Morocco. Morocco. She bought right a house now. and she's redoing a house. Uh, she she's has two long designer estates where she buys houses and flips them. And a so ten thousand square foot house that she's doing all in Moroccan. And I love her because she said, "You know, I'm spending about a million dollars." I thought, wouldn't that be wonderful in three weeks? I would love to spend a million dollars in three weeks. First thing I would do is facelifts. Oh. Botox, Restyl, and Total Face. You know, <laughs> like those housewife broads. You know, those shows, they all look like they all look like twins. <clears throat> and then I would have my body contoured. Angela Joseph is saying she can't wait to meet you. She's in our chat room, and she's going to be at the Pretty Boy yeah, premiere. Yeah, she's going to be at the Pretty Boy yeah. premiere. Well, that's actually the only reason I'm here, is I'm just trying to suck up to you so I can yeah. start getting invited to some of these. Well, you, you, you did a good job, Rose. Actually, wait till you go to the Cedars. So Sue Wong's <laughs> biggest Man, house she lives in is called the Cedars. It was built in the Ooh. 20s by Bella Lugosi. 1926. And um, it was Howard Hughes lived Howard there. Hughes lived there. Um, Johnny Depp lived there. Um, and that's and, and we slept when we were there in, in a Jimmy room Hendrix called the room. Jimi Hendrix room, and that's the room he wrote the song Purple Haze, in, right. which you're like too young to even probably know what that is. But but like it has an MGM room, and all these icons have lived there, and she has parties and like all these iconic rock stars. Like the last time we were there, we had like people from like uh, The Cure, Hollywood Vampires, Guns and Roses, Pink, Pink Floyd. Floyd uh, yeah. uh, all these different bands, and they yeah. play. They play. They all jam and jam, and then we just eat and party and have a good time. She's we have, really cool. We have only nice friends. Those bitchy people, those vampire people, we don't have. We don't like anyone that's negative or 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 jealous or hateful, which there are so many. You know, you're successful, and I'm sure you've come across a lot of hateful people that are envious and jealous of what you've acquired and, and especially a little dog. I'm jealous of him. I'm sorry <laughs> you're not bringing him because I would have stolen him. But anyway, <laughs> so because he's so fucking cute. That is a beautiful little dog. If another one comes up like that, you let me know. I, I love that. I would oh, love I one will. like that. I'm serious because Shazam, you know, all our dogs are superheroes. Astro Boy, Shazam, and Brenda Star, who's Brandy. Uh, so Shazam is on. I don't know. He's, Shazam's fabulous. He's 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 old, and he's, he's all, having some problems. And he's all white and now. His hinds are not working, so he's having difficulty. Old age problems, like us, you like know, me, <laughs> like you. I'm not old. I'm 81 so years young. I'm 81 I, years young. I want to do some. Okay, because I, I I'm super. Um, uh, I, I'm not anymore, but I used to be super involved in the fashion world. I had a bunch of clothing stores in Florida where I sold my designs. They were all one of a kind. I did the costume design for Too Fast, Too Furious. I've dressed Elton John and Madonna and all kinds of people in my one of a kind clothes. And um, so I'm super into this fashion thing. And, and it's funny that we have you on because next week we have Philip Block coming on. I don't know if you know who Philip Block is. 
Um, but he's like a huge stylist from like the 90s and the early 2000s. You know, he did like Michael Jackson and all these people. I want to ask our chat. All right, let me finish. Oh, you're not finished? No, I'm not finished. I was falling asleep. Hurry oh, up. I'll shut up. <laughs> So you guys, so so Dan is a TV host and style expert. He's on Fashion One Television. He's also the lead host on Fab TV on Roku. He covers all things celebrity in Hollywood. Um, he does the Oscars and the Golden Globes. He's also the host of Design Genius on Fashion Television, which is similar to Project One Way. It's available in 160 countries, 350 million viewers. Um, so how did you get into the whole fashion thing? Because you look so young. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, part of it is the Botox. Uh, and then part of it is <laughs> actually being 27. I am young. But uh, as soon as you see that first line, you Botox it. That's what. That's probably the biggest beauty secret I've heard because I've seen oh. women that Botox that line as soon as they got it. And then they're, you know, 60 and 70 and they look like they're 20. Well, I get a paintbrush and I get a crazy <laughs> glue and I paint my entire face with crazy glue without smiling and it never moves. <laughs> It's That's all a great idea. That's a lot now, cheaper than Botox. Now, listen, I'm going to watch your show. Is it worth it? No, it is worth it. And do you know what? Best of all, it only goes for 20 minutes. So even if you hate it, it's over before you can no, even. No, no, but are, are you funny? Are you doing what you're doing now on it? Because I will definitely. Why? Or are you serious? Do you know what's actually funny? I, I was outrageous, but I am a little bit more serious because I think um, actually when I first met Lisa, um, she was a little concerned because it was a reality show and I was also brought on to be funny and, and give it life, whereas she just lost her dog a week ago, so the tone was quite heavy. So um, I think it's been edited per her request to be, um, you know, a little bit more serious. But uh, okay. I've, I've got to say I was so um, taken back you know, by how vulnerable she is and how sensitive and how raw she is and, and how she just let me into her life, you know, so quickly and, and into her heart. Like for her, this is the real deal. Like it's not just a TV show. Um, so that's why it's been edited, you know, not in a more serious tone, but, you know, all of the fun is kind of taken okay. out. Okay. Okay. May, what about on your wait, other wait, shows? Wait, wait, wait. May I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. Be as you are now. I wouldn't want you any other way. Jimmy and I were the first gay couple married to have a television show without being kicked off. Okay, so we we we're fourteen years we old. Did a, we did a press. Uh, we have a precedent here. Do not change who you are for anyone or any show. If they think you're too outrageously gay, fuck them. Let them go look at Perry Mason reruns. <laughs> I mean, you know, you are funny. You're charming. You're terrific. I mean, I, if I didn't like you, I wouldn't say any of these things. I would have said, okay, what what do you eat for breakfast? <laughs> I don't eat breakfast. Now, now, wait a minute. Are you English? Because I hear an accent. Australian, it sounds like. I'm Australian, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an Aussie oh. down under. Oh, I heard rumors about those Australian men. Is it true? It's all true. Every they're, last bit of it. That they're hung like mules? <laughs> well, do you know what? Actually, here's a funny thing with my boyfriend. Uh, we are hung, but we're also uncut. 85% of Australians are uncut. So actually when I first started to get sexual with my boyfriend, I was the first uncut penis he'd ever seen and he thought that something was odd about me and I had to sh literally Google it and it showed 85% of us, you know, Aussies are uncut. No, uncut's in. Every queen in Palm Springs, that's all they want now is uncut cut meat. David sounds like he's Jewish if his name is David. Most people that have a name of David are Jewish. Is David Jewish? I wish. I, I, I always <laughs> joke. He I always says that about me too. <laughs> I would. Every Christmas I say, all I want for Christmas is a Jew. I'm, I <laughs> want to know where my bar mitzvah is. I, I'm still waiting for my bar mitzvah. So uh, I, I wish. So, uh, but, but maybe, maybe we can convert. I've always wanted to convert to Judaism, but my grandmother well, was Catholic, so she wouldn't let me. I'm half Jewish. My father was Jewish. Uh, the reason why I'm not circumcised is my father during the first, the first, Second World War was a, a see in, in in Italy the Nazis or the fascists used to find a guy in the street and tell him to drop his pants, and they looked if he was circumcised they knew he was Jewish they would kill him, so Italians of course don't circumcise so the ones that don't are Christian. Uh, my father said to my mother, do not circumcise the baby because if the Nazis win and they take over America, they'll kill him. Because it's against the Jewish faith to be to not, not be, be circumcised. circumcised. But my but my mother was Christian, so it's okay. I love it. 
that's my little so tale, our, my little story. We actually, uh, we've had several cool people from Australia but on the show, but next to you, my next favorite one, uh, we had Guy Sebastian on the show. Do you oh, know who Guy major. Sebastian is? He was the first um, winner of Australian Idol, our version of yes. American Idol, and he has probably been the only one that has been so consistent and gets number ones every year since winning because, you know, a lot of people do that show and then you don't hear from them ever Nothing again. happens. No, yeah, we had him on the show. Well, I told you, we're major. Wait, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. No, for your information, Sister Dear, we have so many people contacting us that want to come on the show, and we tell them, listen, you're not, you're not qualified. We hate to hurt your feelings, but your IMBD stinks, your IQ, <laughs> your IQ stinks, and nobody knows who you are. Now, what the hell are you going to do on our show? You know, you can't use our show to platform your career because – you have no career to talk about. And they don't get it. So we only have major celebrities and big names. I mean, we've had movie stars on here that you'd freak out from. Well, we've had Academy Award winners. We have Everybody. people with lots of Grammys. So uh, we only have the best on. We only have the best on. So Rosie, dear. And you're our first <laughs> style. I think you're one of our very first, except for uh, Johnny Depp's ex-wife. You're our first. You're actually our only like real TV stylist who's actually on TV doing it. Right. I think you're our very first one in 14 years. Okay, listen. Tell everybody where we could watch your show. So you can watch my show at Peacock, which is NBC's streaming service. So just, you know, Peacock.com, download it on your iPhone. And uh, episode two of Vanderpump Dogs is where, uh, you know, you'll see our special little story. And uh, it's a really feel good show. And, you know, I think everyone will like it. It's got something in it for everyone. So tell me, as okay, first of all, too, like, how, uh, how about your other shows? Uh, so, I, Design Genius, um, I used to watch Project Runway all the time back when I was clothing designs. Is that a fun show? And how do we see it? Do you know what? I always joke that I'm, uh, I'm like low budget Tim Gunn. So uh, <laughs> they couldn't get Tim Gunn. So they're like, oh, who else? Oh, we'll get this, like, you know, kind of knockoff version from Australia that's half his age and we can pay nothing. But uh, I know it is, a, it is a successful show and uh, you can watch it at Fashion Television. So um, it's not um, airing at the moment, but uh, if you just go to Fashion TV, fashiontelevision.com, uh, you know, you'll be able to, to find out when it is airing and, uh, and watch it there. I like love it. So I met so, Tim Gunn once before. No, I, I Hang on, wait, wait. I met Tim Gunn once before, and he was nothing like you at all. And he's like so affected that I thought he was like a total jerk. And I was like, I just thought he was like not cool at all. And and uh, I met him right after I did a fashion show with Betsy Johnson with my clothes and Betsy Johnson. And I was like, and he was just like a dick. So you're, I think you will in the long run. By the time you're his age, you're gonna be, you'll be like everybody in the world, like you know, they'll be running up to you and like hugging you and kissing you for pictures. Yeah, and I will hug and kiss them back because that's you know that's why I do what I do because like you both I'm a I'm a people person and what lights me up is being around people and hearing their stories and and making people laugh and feel good and and look good so uh, you know it's a shame when people you know get famous and they suddenly think they're better than I, I just don't get that that's not how I don't get it either works. me neither okay I don't yeah. mean I don't mean to uh, impose or be a snoop or ask an improper question. Yeah, How does. come you're not living with the guy? <laughs> Ooh, go. I, I, I want to move in, but he hasn't been in a relationship for 20 years. So Liz, at his age, he better move his ass. I, I know. Mean, he don't, he don't have that much time for a relationship. How old is he? 70? No, he's no, he's 57. Oh, he's 56. Young. Oh, he's young. He's 56. He's my age. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he's got a he's got to run a little bit of a run left. <laughs> but yeah. um, so did you propose to him? Well, I'm, you know, I'm going to propose to him because I obviously need a green card to stay here. No, <laughs> I, um, what it's really all about is I just want my green card. Um, so <laughs> once you get that, I can get rid of him. So. <laughs> Sherry Nelson's in the chat room. You hear that, Sherry? Oh my but gosh. listen to me, my sweet. You don't need a green card anymore. Just walk over the wall like they all do, and you just stay here. And they give you sixteen hundred dollars to get started in America. So you make a couple of bucks at it. But um, seriously, this guy better think twice because um, you are a catch. You're you are a cat. so you funny. are, and you're cute as hell. And I bet you got cute buns too. So you're you're really cute. <laughs> Oh, so I, I, let's go designer stuff. So who are some of your favorite people to see what they wear? And who are some of your favorite designers? Because we've never gotten to do this before. Oh, that's fun. Well, you know, I, I find the women a little bit more fun uh, because they, you know, they take more risks. So as far as men, I love Jared Leto. 
Yeah. Um, he takes a risk, you know, like he'll wear something a bit more outrageous and he's a, he's a fashion guy. Um, as far as women are concerned, uh, Renee Zellweger always looks great. Always mm -hmm. looks great. Um, you know, to me, she's not the most interesting person and she does look like, you know, she sucked on a lemon sometimes. She's a little cold. <laughs> She, well, you know, she did too much like plastic surgery to her face because, like, we saw her in Judy, and I didn't even know who knows who she was. Right. <laughs> but she's a damn good actress. But she's a good she's actress. Phenomenal, and she's got like always looks good, and uh, she's so underrated as a style person. If you Google Renee Zellweger red carpet, like, you, you can't find a bad photo. So she's someone I look up to, and then. Uh, as far as designers, I know they've kind of been cancelled in the gay community, but I love Dolce and Cabana. That's what he loves too. That's my favorite. I can't yeah. afford them, but I love them. I mean, they're outrageously expensive. Three hundred and fifty dollars for a shirt. Come on, it's a cotton shirt with some fancy buttons. I used so, to love that. You know that. what I do? I go out and I go to Marshalls and I buy a nine dollar shirt and I put fancy buttons on it and I say it's Dolce <laughs> and Cabana. Don't you do the same thing? <laughs> yeah, right. that's actually fabulous. I was out for dinner the other night in a you know very fancy LA restaurant and I was wearing you know expensive shoes and. Uh, you know, kind of an average kind of blazer type thing. And I was wearing shorts from Walmart that I got for six dollars and they're yeah, who knows? lavender color. And uh, you know, and someone said to me in the line as I was waiting to be seated, like, oh my God, I love your shorts. Like, where did you get them from? And I said, six dollars, Walmart. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I was interviewed once and somebody said that you're you're known for dressing because I always dress. I never go out like a slob. I go to red cop I, everywhere I go, I look don't forget, I'm 81 years old. I'm from the Jane Russell, Marilyn Monroe days when everybody dressed. Um, and they said, you dress very expensively. And I said, not at all. I'm a shopper. I go, I'll go. i wear Dolce Gambana if I go to the outlets and I get it for like less than half price. Um, I can't wear Dolce Gambana. I shop, Gambana. I'm I shop, big bone. No, I shop Marshalls. I'm proud to say I go to Marshalls. I get a lot of rig, you know, my runaround clothes. So how not, do you not my good clothes? My good clothes are all Madison Avenue couture designer. How, how, wait, wait, how do you how do you how do you pronounce Varvados? John Varvados. How, how, what's the correct pronunciation? That's exactly you just did it. That's okay. That's he's my favorite. I have my my because I wear t-shirts and blazers, and like all my t-shirts are are basically that. Or and I like. Uh, I like Hugo Boss. I don't know. I have like five polo. We wear a lot of polo. I'm big bone, so I can't wear, unfortunately, wear Dolce & Gabbana now that I'm old. I could wear it as a uh, kid. Yeah, Dolce & Gabbana is sometimes a little tight on me. I'm better off with Ralph Lauren because Ralph Lauren cuts for the big – I'm six foot, and I'm a oh. big guy. And Ralph cuts for the bigger guy, but he doesn't really have – Anything that exciting, you know what I mean? So wait, Whereas wait. Gabbana, my God, or, or Versace. When he was alive, Christ, I, yeah, I used to wear a lot I of Versace. I owned all Versace. I look like wallpaper. And D squared. I like D squared. Um, yeah. um, so let's go. Let's go. Because I always ask, we have an actor on. I always say, what's your bucket list of who would you like to be? Who would you like to act with in a movie? And and what movie would you have liked to have been in with? So for you then, who are like two celebrities that you would love to get a chance to interview on a red carpet? Um, and then if you were going to get to go to dinner with a celebrity and just talk to them, not no sex or anything, just like to, to talk. Oh, no, sex like, is good. Okay, too. okay. Well, then you can also add a third, uh, another part to it. Who do you think like who are like the really like hot guys and girls that you think? Oh my God, these are like they're so hot. Yeah. Well, number one is Oprah. I you know I've met many celebrities, but I've never met Oprah, and I'm obsessed with Oprah. I that's why I do what I do. I, I'm a I I can't even put into words how much I love that woman. Um, so Oprah, and then, uh, who would I sleep with? Uh, The Rock. I think he's oh. sexy. He's <laughs> king, he got five and those muscles, like, you know, I, I, I think I, I would come just looking at him. So uh, I don't even think we'd even get to the <laughs> If I went to dinner with Jason Statham, Yeah, he likes Jason Statham. I though. might feel him up under the table. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, while you're there, it might be your only chance. you got to go for it. That's so funny. Well, Jimmy, is... Jimmy said he's my free ticket. Now, you never know. I may meet, but he's straight, but you never know. I may meet him and Jimmy's going to get nervous and going to break out in a sweat. Actually, I enjoy the rock movies. I wouldn't want to have I just want to say him, something but... and backtrack to what we said. I do wear a famous designer. I wear mm -hmm. Jimmy Star Vintage. I went. This is one of my shirts with the like. With the, the ducks. They're, they're on. rubber duckies. It's when I met When I met Jimmy a long time ago, Jimmy said to me, Go up to my warehouse and, you know, take whatever you like. Well, we needed a truck. 
<laughs> because I walked around, I took 12 pairs of shoes. I took, I don't know how many jackets and shirts, and I have them still. The shoes, by the way, have rotted. The soles fell off. And Jimmy that said, if, Jimmy said, if you don't wear shoes often, they fall apart. I never knew that. But I wear a lot of Jimmy's uh, retro shirts, and people love them. Except now they look like today. Jimmy was that far ahead of the style. So they, I have to say, they're retro because they are old. They're 20 years old, some of them. Would you ever do it again, Jimmy? Would you ever like, uh, you know, do another <clears throat> line? <clears throat> oh, I, I think I would like love yeah. to. Uh, what really happened? I have kind of like a sad story, and I'm only going to spend 30 seconds on it. But I, I was super successful in Florida, but the government illegally eminent domain the property that you I did everything a hotel in. And made it I made. I bought a hotel and turned it into like a Fred Siegel and Elton John shop there, and all kinds of things. They eminent domain the property, and they gave me way less than I spent in it. So I basically like lost everything, and I had to reinvent you lost $4 myself. Four million dollars. I had to reinvent myself and start all over, and. Since I was self-financed, I didn't have the money to do it. So if I had the money to do it again, I think I would love to do it again. I made really wild stuff. I mean, some of the stuff was really offensive. Too much, like too much. Like I used to have – I made a tuxedo jacket that had little erect penises all over it, and it and it was embroidered kiss my dick all over it. I mean, I did some really wild stuff, but I did some fun – everything was fun, you know, fun and – But the rockers and the people of that era wanted that Yeah, I dressed shit. all rock stars because every, and stuff. Nobody cursed in those days, and these guys were cursing, and that was shocking people. Today, I could have fuck you written all over a shirt. Nobody would even notice. You know, because we're so immune to to a vulgar language. I mean, I made T-shirts that said like "Gay for Pay" and and <laughs> uh, "Fuck me, I'm famous." And I mean, like it was just fun, you know, fun stuff. But so Jimmy lost his four million, and then I met him. And then I was broke, and now I had to listen, reinvent now myself. Now listen to what I'm telling you about your guy. Jimmy was living with somebody for 25 years, and Jimmy wasn't happy. But Jimmy was afraid to go and tell the guy that he was leaving him for me because I was like a home wrecker. <laughs> and I said to Jimmy, let's go. I'll tell him. Well, when I walked in, the guy jumped up and said, Ron Russell, what an honor. I'm so happy to meet you. I said, in 10 minutes, you won't be so happy to know me. <laughs> and I told him, I said, Jimmy's in love with me and I'm in love with him and we're moving in and he's moving out of here. And there you go. So that's what you got to do with your guy. You got to go up to him and say to him, listen, Buster, the gig is up. You ain't getting this bod no more. Unless you, he said he's moving in. No, no, no. Marriage, marriage, <laughs> marriage. <laughs> moving in is no good. Marriage. We have matching ones. <laughs> oh, gorgeous. Oh, wow. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. <laughs> they really are. They're stunning. I can't. I'm, well, I'm going to see that in real life soon. Yes, you're going to see yes, it in real life. Will. They're not. They're not that terrific, but they're, but they're nice. fun. They're nice. They're fun. But anyway, you know. I watched a documentary last night that I wanted to talk about earlier. My hairdressing teacher, when I went to school in 1960, Lenny Dietz was a drag queen by the name of uh, Daisy D. He's 92 years old living in Manhattan. They did a documentary of all the old drag queens that I knew from the 1950s and early 60s. Now, whoever's alive, they're all old men. But you know what? They're all alone. They don't have partners. And it was so sad for me to watch this documentary because these men really are lonely. And who wants them now? They're 100 years old. Mm -hmm. So my advice to you is get somebody now and, and work on it and keep it until you're old. Oh, but by the time you're old, he'll be dead. So make sure he has a lot of money so you <laughs> inherit it. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I just need to be around you all the time, Ron. Like, your life is like... Well, I, I'm, in, I'm inspirational. You are. And, I, like, I never got to meet Joan Rivers, but I feel like I, I got a, I've got a piece of her in you, even though you said she wasn't like that in real life. Well, but... let, let, me, let me tell you a quick story. I was at... Joan Rivers did a thing in Hollywood once a week where she would rent out the... Not rent out. She'd go and perform in the Hollywood laugh club whatever the hell it was called and i was there and debbie reynolds was there and uh mr blackwell and joan was as funny as hell now i go outside and i knew debbie really well debbie reynolds and i'm chatting with debbie reynolds and she said come sit in the car well gab so i sit in the car now i'm in the limo the back seat with debbie who comes in but joan rivers now i'm seated between joan rivers and debbie reynolds more fucks flew than I've ever heard sailors. These two broads had mouths like you can't believe. Funny, I wished I had a camera, a reality show, it would have won Emmys. These two broads together, because Debbie was quick. 
Debbie was fast and funny. And Joan was batting it back. And I just sat there almost peeing myself. And I said, I got to get out of this car because your girl, girls are making me crazy. And then they left. But Joan was really nice. Debbie was an angel. But Joan Rivers and Debbie Reynolds, nice people. A lot of people from my generation were uh, kind, good actors and giving performers. And when you knew them, they weren't snobs. Like yeah. today, a lot of these young punks, I think who the fuck they are. They made two movies and they say, kiss my ass. The biggies were very good natured. Jane Russell was my best friend for years. We were like brother and sister. I took her name. Wow. Oh, he doesn't know that. You oh. don't know my history. I had a TV show called Set the Record Straight. I interviewed Lauren Bacall, Cliff Roberts, Betty Davis, Jane Russell, uh, Terry Moore, Arlene Dahl. Oh, God, the list just goes on and on. All the major Hollywood stars. You can see some of them on uh, YouTube. So I'm from the olden days, and I love to dress. Um, I see these people come to red carpets. They look like slobs, like they just cleaned the yard, you know, picked up the leaves. And I say to them, you know, what the fuck? This is a red carpet event. There's a girl there in a gorgeous beaded evening gown. The next star was some schmuck in Bermuda shorts with tattooed legs and, and basketball sneakers. Yeah. You know, dress up, folks. Come on, cut this shit where it's cool to look like a slob. It's not. Yeah, it's cool to take care. I think it's, you know, I think it's a form of good manners. And that's why I love the French so much, because it is. It's like saying, I respect you. You know, I respect myself. It's I, I, I think it's a form of good manners. Well, I mean, so, you wore a jacket today and I appreciate that. Yeah, no time I, because I was like, you know, you still you guys are casual. You know, it's not like, you know, super formal. But uh, yeah, of course, always a jacket. Well, Remember too I, I that when we go on Wednesday, it's a it's a horror movie. So like dr dress nice, but not like tuxedo nice. Like yeah, nice. fun, like like yeah. you are now nice. Yeah. And yes. and wear a bra. Your boobs are bouncing. Oh fuck! <laughs> yeah, they are. Shit. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, you. you guys, this is Dan Babic. You can follow him on Instagram. It's at Dan O oh, Astro Quiet. Dan B A B I C. You guys for the spelling. Follow him on Instagram. Watch him on Vanderpump Dogs. Check out what about um Fab TV on Roku? Is that something that we can see now or no? Yeah, watch it now. There's it's all on YouTube. Just Google Dan Babic Fab TV and they'll all come up. There you go, you guys, because you're gonna this is somebody you're definitely gonna want to know. He's famous now, but in another year or two, he's gonna be like mega famous because he's super great. He's got a terrific personality, he's quick witted, he's cute, Very he's got everything quick. going for him. And thank you for coming on because I said to Jimmy, Who is this guy? What is he doing? <laughs> I said, am I going to be bored to death? And Jimmy said, no, he's really not. Well, I was not bored to death at all, my dear. I enjoyed you so much. Looking forward to seeing you in a week and a half. And um, I will watch your shows. I want to see them now to see your work. But please don't change. Don't understate yourself, no matter what that broad says, you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe she don't want you stealing the show because your personality is a show stealer. It is a maybe. show stealer. Uh yeah, let me talk. To, I'll talk to you about that when I see you. But I, I came. I think it, it was a little bit of a threat because my personality was bigger than hers, and her name's on the thing. So maybe that was why. You yeah, know you what? have to watch you that. Soon what? you'll have your own. It'll be I've, the Dan I've, Babic. I've, I have had that happen. Show. You know, I've made movies forever, and I've had that happen on TV sets or movie sets where my performance was better than the star's performance, and suddenly when I saw it on on TV or wherever I saw it, my performance was minimized down to yeah. like. Hello, yeah. cut. Yeah, it's yeah, cruel. I love it's that. cruel. So cruel. do me a favor too. Then uh, when you we get done, just uh, email me your phone number, um, uh, and then I'll like text you the stuff, and we'll uh, get you on the list for Wednesday. And if you want, if you're lonely, I'll put that number in the men's room in the bathroom. No, you won't. On Macy, <laughs> on the wall in Macy's, oh, great, and I'll write fantastic. if you want. But, for, for a good <laughs> for a good time for a good time call and I'll put your number. He said that would be fantastic. Oh, great. That would be quickly. fantastic. You yeah, are you'll very be, you'll quick be, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be very very famous. Everybody in, no in the time. chat room loves you too. By the way, they're all saying they love you. So you guys because, follow because him. He's, he's honest. He's real and he's fun. And he's he's yeah. You you've really got it all going on. We want to thank you. And I ha also have a peach jacket like that. Ooh, well, maybe you'll... I'll maybe I'll wear it next week. Never Do it. Know. We can play who wore it better. We can have everyone everyone vote. Actually, yeah, I can get it. I can actually get it put in like some big magazine who wore it better, and we'll see. 
<laughs> so Dan, thank you so much. You're an angel. We had a blast. Everybody check out Vanderpump Dogs, especially episode two, where you can see the fabulous Gizmo getting adopted by the fabulous Dan Babic. And we wish you all the luck in everything and all the best in everything that you do. You're a real treat. And, and if any way you can help prevent the execution of dogs, please do. Use your clout. Call whomever it is that you think can help us rid this planet of animal cruelty. And if you need to get a dog, please, please rescue. Yes. All right, Dan. Thank, Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I can't wait to meet you in person. All right, Absolutely. bye-bye. Absolutely. See you next week, baby. Bye-bye. What a cool what, guy. Very nice. See, gay people are nice people. 